again, this is where it gets a little exciting. So we, we built this API. Now I'm not liking this API slash on there. I'm just going to put in the name of the controller as the route. Let's try running this again and make sure we got it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it on there. I just, I'm getting annoyed typing it. So, um, Marriott food and it goes and builds this data for me that I can now use down on the react side. Okay. So let's switch back from, I'll go ahead and stop this actually and come back to VS code where I'm going to edit my front end. Now, by the way, if I go into the back end folder now, it's got all this information in here and I can go in and edit right in VS code. I can edit my, uh, controller. I can make changes. I can do what I want to here. And so, and, and it's asking, do you want to install the recommended C sharp dev kit extension? Sure. So let's install that. If you don't have it already, then, uh, that'll allow us to, to write code better in visual studio code. But now we can edit right in here, things that we want to, it just that visual studio has some features that make it nicer for things like bringing the packages or, um, you know, a lot of the interface, um, uh, the debugging tools and whatnot, if are nice in that, uh, environment. Um, Oh, this is more complicated than what I thought. I thought this was going to be an easy thing. <laughs> no time. We have no time. All right. Do that on your own time. All right. Okay. Let's go in and uh, I'll, I'll continue editing in Visual Studio itself, but you can set it up so you can edit right here in, in VS Code. So we've got this data being spit out of our, our website. Let's go ahead and make it so our React app can capture that data. Now, one of the things you might be thinking to yourself is if I want to go print this data out, so let's say I'm going to create a new component and this one is going to be my, um, food list. So I'm going to come, let's close this back end folder or minimize it. And I'm going to come into my source folder and I'm going to create a new file. And maybe I want to keep everything relative to this food idea in its own folder. I can come into the source folder and create my own food folder. So then in here, I can right click and create a new file and I can say, I want this to be my food list, uh, component of this website. So food list.tsx. All right. So I've got my food list here that I'm going to go build, um, this list and it's going to be a table of, with the information about the food. Now I can come in there just like we've done, create a function, call it the food list. And, um, in there, I'm obviously going to need to return something so I can return the information that I'm going to build. And then at the end of all of this, I want to make this component something that I can use the tags around the, the angle brackets, just like we did with the header in the app. So here I have the header in the angle brackets. And so in order to make it be able to do that, I need to have this statement in after the, the function saying export default food list. So then we just need to determine what goes inside these braces. What is it that we're actually going to return in this food list? Well, what I want is, uh, for one, um, now again, we want to, we can use these fragments if we want to, we can use a div, but what I want to have in here is the first part is going to be a div and we'll use the, the, um, oh, bootstrap grid is the word I was looking for. So I'm going to create a row again. So bootstrap grid row, and then I'm going to create a, let's do like a, I don't know what size. Let's do a smaller one. So maybe like a H4 and class name of this is going to be, let's center this text. And this is going to say, this is the best Marriott food. Okay. So we get out to the end of that. So this is the best Marriott food. That's our header. And that's all I want for there. Um, in that. And then the next row, 
then I'm going to put in this table, or not the next row, but I'll just put in the table. And the class name for this is going to be a table, and then I think we've done a table bordered. We can make this look better once we have it set up. Okay, so get that set up. Here's the table. And these are both elements that are inside these uh, React fragments. And so my table's gonna have a head. And inside that head, I'm gonna create a little row here that has the table headings. So the table headings, I'm gonna say, well, first of all, they don't need to know what the ID is. We don't typically print that out in the table. But I want to know what is the event, so the event name. And then we'll have a, a row with the vendor name. And then we'll have, a, not a row, but a column. And then a column with the, the food rating, okay? So we've got this information here. And then after that, we can come in after the head and we can put in our table body. And in our table body, this is where we're gonna go pull the data. I'm not gonna put anything in there for a minute other than saying we're gonna have, well, I won't even say that. So let's leave that, let's save it. Let's see if it likes it okay. And sure enough, it likes it okay. So let's go into our app then. And after the header, I will add in the food list item. And I do that pretty much every time without putting the backslash in and then I have to go delete it out. So anyway, let's do that self enclosed tag. We don't have to, but it's good to. Okay, so it doesn't know what food list is. It's not defined. And that's because it's not in the, we haven't imported like we did with the header tag. Now, if I come to this and say, let's view the problem. Whoops, let's, let's go to the quick fix. It says, well, do you want to add an import? I found one under food, under food list. And I say, why, yes, thank you. So it'll go grab that information. And now when I save, then it's going to pop this table into my app. All right, so we've got the table here. But the question that might be on your mind is, in the last, as we built just ASP.NET apps, when we went to go print out this list of uh, food, then we would have bound, we would have put the fields in there, and we would have said ASP4, and then the name of the field, right? And so that made it really easy. We said app model at the top. The model is going to be Marriott food. And what we want to do here is say this one is ASP4, or, or actually, I guess we did the capital M model. Uh, the ASP4 was on a form when we were submitting, which we'll do later. But this is a, a capital M model. We would say model dot event name, model dot vendor name, model dot food rating. So how do we bind the data that we're getting in that API to this form so that it can go get it and, and print out the, this table for us? And we'll do that in the next video. Spencer out.